Hello, and welcome to this American Promise Training in Action series. My name is Marnie Walsh, and I'm the Empowerment Coordinator with American Promise. Whether you've been involved with American Promise for a long time, or if this is your first time, you're in the right place. If this is your first time, we'll be providing a lot of information, but don't worry. We will follow up with clear action items and support you that you'll be, and you'll be able to take this action with us right away. This call and others that follow will cover two areas. First, this is the initial call of three that will prepare you for the lobby day meetings with your members of Congress during the National Citizen Leadership Conference, the NCLC, which is May 2nd through 6th. Our lobby days will be on May 4th, 5th, and 6th. This session is also part of our training and support team series. While there will be several different trainings and support teams that come out of these trainings, the purpose of this meeting with elected officials training is one, to inspire you about the importance of meeting with elected officials and partnering with them in fulfilling our mission to win the 20th amendment to get big money out of politics. Two, to help you be a more confident and enthusiastic spokesperson for our work. And three, to provide a structure of ongoing support to assist you in building powerful relationships with your elected officials. Over time, our focus will be on meeting with elected officials, whether at the local, state, or federal level. After lobby day, the meeting with the elected officials team will meet monthly to support each other in having breakthroughs and moving your elected officials up the champion scale from opposed, neutral, or supporter, all the way up to advocate, leader, and eventually champion. The volunteer lead the volunteer leaders of the meeting with elected officials teams are Marie Henselder Kimmel and Vicki Barnes. Marie, you can unmute yourself and say hi. Tell us about your role in American Promise and where you're located. And then Vicki, you can do the same. Thank you both so much and to all our other team leaders. Thanks, Marnie. Hi, I'm Marie Henselder Kimmel. I'm leader of uh, Tri-County Chapter of American Promise, New Jersey. We launched back in July of 2017. I'm a retired OBGYN and my experience in practice as the Affordable Care Act was being rolled out um, really uh, made me worry about money and politics and that's why I'm here to do my best in trying to get this constitution through the, uh, through the process of a amendment, uh, the getting the amendment done. Hi, I'm Vicki Barnes and I'm the chapter leader for Minnesota. And we started in February of 2017, but I have been working on this for almost eight years now, ever since I found out I would be a grandmother for the first time. So the reason I'm working on this is to make sure that my grandchildren have a functioning democracy uh, when they become of age. So welcome tonight, welcome to all of you. Thank you both so much. The other four trainings and ongoing teams are as follows. One, the friend banking team. Two, writing letters to the editor team. Three, planning and hosting events team. And four, social media team. Some of you have asked how the series of five trainings and teams that will come out of them differ from the five part training series Azer is leading on the first Tuesday of the month for 8B chapters. The training series Azer is leading is focused on guiding AP ch chapters in strategic thinking as they work to get their state ready to ratify the amendment. The trainings and ongoing teams we've just been discussing are focused on specific tactics, specific activities that the chapters will benefit from being good at. Azer's trainings are on strategic thinking and these are on tactics. As we said, this is the first in a series of three trainings leading up to our National Citizen Leadership Conference on May 2nd through 6th, concentrating on getting you ready for our lobby days on Monday 4th, on May 4th, 5th, and 6th. This call is about one, registering and getting excited about the NCLC, that includes a conference and lobby days, and two, scheduling meetings with a US representative and both your senators so we can work to get big money out of politics. Our second lobby day prep training call will be Wednesday, 
March 24th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. And our third lobby day prep training will be Wednesday, April 14th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. There's a lot to look forward to in these coming months and in the next hour. The plan for night tonight is going to go like this. First, Azer Cole, Deputy Political Director at American Promise, will give an overview of the NCLC and Lobby Day. We will have some time for Q&A. Then, Marie Henschelder Kimmel will share her about her first ever Lobby Day meeting with a congressional office. Finally, we're going to have a discussion on how you schedule a meeting with your member of Congress. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Azer Cole to tell us about this year's NCLC. Great, well, thank you, Marnie, and thank you, Vicki and Marie, and everyone for joining. And I think it's nice to give that overview of all the different avenues of support that American Promise offers, and whether it's friend banking or whether it's the editor writing or meeting with elected officials, um, that, that support that Marnie leads with the empowerment department and providing and the timing is is the perfect time if if you're not fully involved with American Promise yet to jump right in with the timing of our National Citizen Leadership Conference coming right up around the corner. Um, it's something that we do every year and it's really a lot of things. It's a big tent of reformers coming together, a place to meet advocates in your state and across the country. But most importantly, what it is, is it's a national convening of Americans working together to win a constitutional amendment to get big money out of politics. This year's conference will be online, but will be as close to our usual Washington DC conference as possible, where there will be plenary sessions and past guest speakers to give you a sense of range from acclaimed historian Doris Crims Goodwin to Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Bill Moyers uh, to Massachusetts Congressman Jim McGovern and many others. Um, there will be breakout sessions. There will be topics like how do I connect with community members where I live to advance this amendment forward? Topics like what does a constitutional amendment or how does a constitutional amendment fit into other reforms like ranked choice voting or fair districts or publicly funded elections? Topics like how do we talk about our issue in a way that's engaging for Democrats, independents, and Republicans? These plenary and breakup sessions all build towards the powerful finale of the conference. And that's what we're talking about here on this call today. It's our citizen lobby days. It's where Americans organized into teams meet directly with their members of Congress or their staff to advocate for their support for a US constitutional amendment to get big money out of politics. And it's been my responsibility and, and pleasure the last two conferences to lead American Promises Citizen Lobby Day. And it's a big production with a lot of moving pieces and usually running around sort of like a chicken with my head cut off with a big binder, making sure everyone has what they need. And it's always helpful that we've practiced over and over and over ahead of time. So there's no surprises and that our first conference we had about 70 meetings with elected officials or their staff um, at our conference at the end of 2019. We had over 130 meetings with elected officials or their staff. And really simply put, it's our single most impactful event of the year. And I hope that everyone on this call participates and gets others to participate with them. There's no need to get a plane ticket to Washington, D.C. and stay in a hotel this year. Um, it's, it's online and we're hoping that opens it up in a way that it's more accessible than ever before. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the chat here for everyone, the link to the registration page, which we'll certainly follow up with um, tomorrow in a recap email and American Promise will be letting you all know of updated speakers as they get confirmed. And we'll be sending this around um, uh, repeatedly between now and May at the start of the conference. But um, if you think you are interested, please don't hesitate. Go ahead and click on that link and you'll see there's an option to register for National Citizen Leadership Conference. And then there's the option to register for the National Citizen Leadership Conference and Citizen Lobby Days. Um, please do, I would strongly recommend the National Citizen Leadership Conference 
and citizen lobby days, which is what we're talking about tonight. Um, upon registering to give you a sense, letting us know you want to attend lobby day, Marnie or myself will reach out to see if you'd like to be the point person for fellow registrants in your area to set up meetings with your members of Congress. Or we'll let you know if we already have a point person, say you're in Minnesota and Vicki Barnes is setting up meetings with Minnesota's congressional delegation, say so it's great, we've got a leader already in your area setting up these meetings and we'll connect you to this person ahead of time. So you have time to practice and here's when American Promise will have our lobby day training sessions, extensions of this conversation. So to give you a sense of what will happen once you register for the conference and lobby day. And we'll talk a lot more about this process, the remainder of this call and in future training calls. But I should mention now that as you're listening and thinking of questions on this call tonight, as you think of questions, feel free to be putting them in the Q&A function in the bottom center of your screen, and, and we'll have some time later on to get to them. Um, but now, uh, enough from me. I'm, I'm thrilled to introduce a champion in this work. You heard from her a little bit already, but we'll give a proper introduction to Marie Henselder Kimmel, leader in the New Jersey American Promise chapter. I see many others on the call, Joan DeVore um, and others in New Jersey. But Marie, thank you for being here and really excited to hear about a meeting with a member of Congress that you and your team had during our lobby day back in 2018. Thank you, Marie, for being here. That's, I'm happy to be here. And um, so several of you have already heard this story, but um, for those who haven't, uh, it's a classic. So um, by the time that we had uh, participated in the 2018 um, NCLC and we're preparing for lobby day. Our local chapter had had two meetings um, locally with our the staff for our congressperson and our senator, where there were maybe four, I think maybe five of our members had attended. And we used there's a model for the meeting that we'll familiarize you with, which um, is really lays out the the meeting nicely and it, it creates a, a feeling of um, welcome i think and thankfulness to the person you're meeting with and we practiced that and we had everything written down and and we were still a little jittery when we went through it so we were probably a little more formal than we needed to be but we felt prepared when we went to lobby day um, we were lucky enough new jersey's not that far from dc there were 14 New Jersey members who came to NCLC that year. So for the senators meetings, we were gonna have 14 in those meetings rather than just the four or five. So we used the um, training to pick out six or seven speakers and plan what they were gonna say, how they were gonna take on the different roles in the meeting. And we took advantage of some downtime to, to do to practice and we felt pretty well prepared. Our very first meeting for lobby day was at 9 a.m. and it was with Senator Robert Menendez's office. We got there a little bit early. We waited for a few minutes. And we were ushered into the large um, conference room and we were just going around the room and um, making introductions when an alarm started to sound. And at first we, the aide was ignoring it and we were ignoring it, but then somebody said, don't we need to check on that? Well, it turned out to be a drill for an incoming aircraft impact. So everyone needed to immediately evacuate. So we, we evacuated going down the five sets of stairs, down the, the five stairs, uh, we were up on the fifth floor, down five sets of stairs, out of the building, down the block, down two blocks. And in the, mean, in the meantime, as we're all sticking together, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, we only have 30 minutes to do this meeting. And this is eating into our time. I'm sure he has other meetings scheduled. I don't want to lose out on this opportunity that we waited for and prepared for. So we're standing under a tree on the corner and kind of looked at each other. And I said, well, we're prepared for the meeting. Would it be okay if we start the meeting here? He said, sure. So away we went. We had our first lobby day meeting under a tree on the corner of two blocks away from the Hart Senate building. And um, it went very well. We were very well prepared and um, there was really good rapport. And we actually got to speak 40 minutes out under the tree. Um, and it, the whole thing went 
you know, extremely smoothly. But I think that if we weren't so well prepared, we never would have been able to hold a meeting under the tree and get all our points across and, and um, you know, hold an effective meeting. So I just wanted to also talk about the second meeting very shortly. The second meeting was with Senate, Senator Cory Booker's office, um, his, his chief counsel. And um, we still had 14 people for the meeting and we rotated the positions for the most part of who was going to speak. Um, and that went very smoothly. We only had 25 minutes. It was supposed to be 30 minutes. It only wound up being 25 minutes. So there was no time. In addition to the first meeting, several other people got to chime into the discussion because it was going so smoothly and there was a little extra time. The second meeting, we actually, I think we actually trimmed somebody from talking and uh, we got through everything very smoothly. He, you know, he said, this is a really well, uh, well organized meeting and I appreciate your time and he was receptive. Um, but we didn't have the, there was no freelancing, there was no improvising whatsoever in that meeting. It was really like even trimmed down what our focus was to get our points across. So I think the, um, I think the takeaway is that when you're really well prepared, you can truly go with the flow and um, be able to think on your feet, so to literally in our case, um, and still have an effective meeting and, and you know, get you accomplish what you choose to, what you wanna get accomplished in your meetings. There is a YouTube video on the American Promise uh, um, YouTube channel. And I think Marnie, were you gonna put the link in the, um, in the email afterwards if anybody wants to see the video? We have yep. a videographer that was following us there. So he videoed and did a little piece on the whole thing. Super. Thank you, Maria. Literally thinking on your feet out in the field with your member of Congress. I remember hearing about that afterwards. Just, th just thinking, wow, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to have the meeting won and feel confident in doing so even with that alteration. It mm -hmm. wasn't the plan to have a fire alarm go off right in the middle of it. Um, that, that's really what we're doing on this call and what we'll do in May and in March ahead of the conference, um, you know, you might see that, you know, we'll talk about May 4th, May 5th, and May 6th as the days where we're actually requesting meetings with members of Congress. But we've also got May 2nd blocked off as sort of the kickoff of the conference. And the very first thing we're going to do May 2nd, after we basically say welcome to the conference, is now let's practice again for lobby day. And if you're not involved yet, it's not too late to get involved. It's preparation is, is really the name of the game. And the Congressional Management Foundation, which is a, a great organization, they do all sorts of studies on how does Congress work and how can advocates be most effective. They do trainings for congressional staff and they also do research with congressional staff. And when the staff was asked what had the most influence on members of Congress who hadn't yet made up their mind on an issue, um, they were asked about emails, phone calls, petitions, handwritten letters, even visits from paid lobbyists. The most effective means of communication they found was from constituents. They said direct constituent interactions have more influence on lawmakers' decisions than other advocacy strategies. And I'll put a link in the chat a little bit later on to part of our lobby day training material. It's going to be specific around meeting or requesting meetings with elected officials. And we'll follow up with the full instructions um, after the call where you can navigate it to it on your own time. And again, in it, you'll see instructions on how to request a meeting with your member of Congress. We'll talk through this later on in the call, but I will emphasize that this isn't something that everybody who attends lobby days will do. This is something that you'll do if you're the point person for setting up a meeting. You know, we work really hard to organize ahead of time. So, you know, Senator Booker in New Jersey doesn't get 10 meeting requests from the New Jersey American Promise chapter for the same day, but he gets one with 10 people who are coordinating ahead of time. And, and that's what we work to. Um, set up and support for anyone wherever they are across the country beforehand in these practice calls and in the time that Marnie and myself will spend directly connecting you 
with one another wherever you are in this country. So if you don't know if you're the point person when you register for the conference and lobby days, check in with myself or Marnie and really what will happen is you'll, you'll register and Marnie or myself will reach out to you and, and we'll have a conversation specifically about what between now and lobby day will we'll support you in to make sure your, your lobby day meetings are successful and, and well prepared for. And you can email Marnie. I'm gonna Marnie, I'm gonna put your email in the chat here um, at marniew at americanpromise.net with any outstanding questions. Um, but now, and I should add again while you're on this call, be do be thinking of questions and putting them in the QA feature. Um, but now I'm gonna turn it over to Vicki Barnes, Minnesota American Promise chapter leader to share with us her experience in setting up meetings successfully as part of past lobby days that we've had. Thank you, Vicki, for being here tonight. Thank you, Azer. Uh, well, this will be our third lobby day, uh, but the first virtual one with American Promise. Virtual meetings should have a larger attendance since the, in the past, very few from Minnesota chapter have been able to make the trip to DC. So I'm really looking forward to more involvement this year and having more members experience the importance of the moment as we present a united and dedicated team in our efforts with elected officials and or staff. In organizing meetings with elected officials, you can have members initiate a meeting in their district or one point person to do so on behalf of the chapter. I found that having a point person do the scheduling is best, but if you choose individual scheduling for their districts, you'll need a shared document so you can coordinate times collectively. What we've done in the past in Minnesota and will continue to do this year is have someone in each congressional district contact their elected officials office and ask who the scheduler is and get their contact info. This is what our member Catherine did um, both in both lobby days before. Catherine contacted the scheduler and representative Emmer's office via email, copying me and shared information on American Promise. She told the scheduler uh, ab about what we wanted to talk about and uh, that we were holding a lobby day and gave her the date. When Catherine, with Catherine explaining American Promise and our work, the scheduler was able to determine which legislative aid would be appropriate. In her email, Catherine introduced me to the scheduler. I followed up with an email and let the scheduler know the time range of our availability and thanking her for her help. Similar efforts were being made by several other members in their districts. So I put all the information on an Excel spreadsheet and updated it as the weeks passed. As the schedule would get a few appointments locked down, I would send a reminder to the, the ones who had not committed, always copying the member who initiated the contact, advising them of the remaining availability of our group. I tried to push afternoon times for senators and morning times for representatives so that we could have less hopping around at the Capitol, uh, but we still ended up with a late meeting across the complex. Uh, we won't have to worry about that in a virtual situation, but when you're actually in DC, that's kind of a challenge. So when the schedule was about 75% complete or so, I would send it to Kimberly at the time and Azer, so the information could be added to their big spreadsheet. And as more appointments were confirmed, I would just update them. Both years, I felt a bit of stress thinking that two members of Congress would want the same time and that I would have to ask one of them to choose another time. Their schedules are so, they're so busy and everything's so tight for them usually, uh, but that never happened. Both years, we were able to meet with legislative aides of six of our eight representatives and both senators. In fact, last year, Representative Dean Phillips joined us after our meeting started, and that was a nice surprise. Afterwards, I send a thank you letter to the aides we met with and uh, with using the notes that one of our members had taken during the meetings. So this year with the virtual meeting and extended time options, things should be a lot less stressful. And this experience will help prepare you for a state lobby day as well, which I do encourage. It would enable your chapter to meet with legislators in districts that are not close to the Capitol, since your members can meet with them from where they live while we're working remotely. That's about all I have, Azer. Super. Thank, thank you for sharing that. And in a minute or two, I'm going to 
walk us through, I'm going to share my screen and go through the process of setting up uh, or requesting a meeting with your elected official. And again, I'm, I'm just going to put this um, on people's radar. It's not as something to do right this second, but as something to, to know that you could do. And it's, it's not so difficult, but again, to emphasize the value of coordinating with with us ahead of time if you're the point person for these meetings. But before we do that, I'm, I'm just looking at the questions that are starting to come in and, and we'll get to all of these that there are very good questions so far. Vicki, there's one in particular that I think is quite relevant. It's, it's from Michael who asks, how does organizing a meeting with the member of Congress or Senator change um, in the time of COVID, you know, virtual meetings? Can you talk a little bit to your experience in Know, scheduling virtual meetings and any differences, um, even in having the meeting would be great to, to share with people on the call. Well, it actually, like I said, um, makes it easier for you to have more people attend, um, but they are very accessible. Uh, they're doing all their work remotely, so it's no longer a new thing for them. So everybody's pretty much worked the bugs out. Uh, usually what happens when you've got a meeting scheduled with an elected official is that their aide would come on. If you have a large group, their aide would come on first. So um, they'd be on the, on, the, on the Zoom meeting with you. And then the, the um, elected official pops on when, they, when they're, as soon as they can. They're not always on time. Their schedule's uh, always in flux. Uh, so it, it's, it's um, I think, I feel it's a little more intimate actually uh, to be able to see them right on the screen in front of you. Uh, and it, it's, it's more comfortable uh, because you're not dressed up in, in an office, um, you know, uh, trying to be on your best behavior. You're, you're more comfortable in your surroundings and I'm sure they're more comfortable in their surroundings. And it just seems a little bit more relaxed. So uh, I actually don't see this going away. I mean, lobby days are fun in person. I think those are awesome. Uh, but I think as far as meeting with your elected officials, I think this is going to be a, a new normal, uh, which opens up so, so much more to, ev to every group and, and every citizen that they can, they can actually meet easily face-to-face, -face, even though they're not in the same room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for, it's nice, it's reassuring to hear that you've gone through this process a couple of times and, you know, report back that, you know, it's, it's quite doable. There's not so much that's different. I imagine it's it's nice that we're having this conference in May 2021 and not, you know, March 2020. The offices might be a little bit less well versed in having these, but you know, by now it seems like that it should be pretty smooth. Um, and no and which. just so you know, you are the one that would have to set up the meeting. You have to arrange for the Zoom link and and all that. There, the office won't do that for you. You'll have to do that and then invite them to the Zoom. Super. Um, there's a good question here. I'm, I'm going to, we're just going to answer it live here. What's the final outcome of the meetings with elected officials that we want them to come away with? And for anyone who's participated in past lobby days, we'll be doing the same thing again this year where for participants, we'll, we'll provide a sheet and we'll say, okay, you're meeting with House Democrats here is our primary ask and here are some secondary asks and there'll be variations of this format of primary ask and secondary asks for a senate democrat and for a house republican and for a senate republican and in broad strokes um, the outcome that we want to take away is that we're moving our elected officials up the champion scale so you know, maybe you meet with someone once, they're probably not going to become a champion for their issue, but they might listen and be interested and you meet with them again, then they're supportive and you meet with them again. You know, you slowly move them up the scale of being you know, opposed um, or unaware to being interested, to being supportive, to being a champion for our cause. Um, to be a little bit more specific, we'll be advocating that if they haven't already, that our elected officials co-sponsor specific pieces of federal legislation. Um, just one example of that is House Joint Resolution 1 in the House of Representatives right now, um, a primary ask for Democrats, for example, in the House of Representatives 
can be. If, if not already, please do co-sponsor House Joint Resolution 1, and there will be a counterpart bill in the Senate introduced by the time we have this lobby day. It's going to be introduced by Senator Shaheen in New Hampshire, a Democrat. Um, as we think, how do we really win this breakthrough with Republicans? Um, the big challenge, it's not convincing Republican constituents, it's convincing Republican members of Congress. John Katko in upstate New York is a co-lead sponsor of this resolution I just mentioned, House Joint Resolution 1. And, and he's taken the, the lead for the Republican Party in publicly supporting this amendment. And one of the strategic decisions that we've tried to do in past lobby days, and we're taking one step further and, and doubling down with this lobby day is over and over again, it's, it's recommended. And we, we see through various different issues that a really effective way to build cross-partisan support for a big project, which takes, in the case of a constitutional amendment, super majorities in both parties, two thirds of the House and two thirds of the Senate, is to have a vehicle where an equal number of Democrats and Republicans can be joining at the same time. Um, Independent Senator Angus King in Maine described it to us as the Noah's Ark style resolution. So for a Republican in the House of Representatives, for example, not yet supportive publicly of our constitutional amendment, we'll make sure that they know about existing pieces of legislation. We'll say John Katko, Republican in upstate New York is supporting, but we're also looking to identify a select group of Republican members of Congress in the House and same thing in the Senate um, to join alongside their Democratic counterparts on this Noah's Ark style resolution with an even number of Democrats and Republicans from the onset. So it's a long winded answer to this question. What, what's the takeaway that we want to leave our members of Congress with? And it also gets a little bit to um, a question which is asked, well, we've been doing this for a while. What are the chances that we keep moving this forward? Is this just an impossible, big, unattainable project? You know, the answer is, is no, it's, it's not impossible. We've got 27 amendments in our constitution. Um, there's no reason why there won't be more constitutional amendments and we don't kid ourselves and think, well, they're easy. They just happen. No, well, they don't just happen. They happen when people make them happen. And American Promises, working on a 10-year game plan we started in 2016 and are working backwards from success in 2026. So I see some more questions coming in. We'll, we'll get to them later on in the call. But now what I'm going to do is put in the chat here um, a link to instructions for requesting a meeting with the member of Congress. And this is just one piece of our larger lobby day packet, which we'll be following up with um, tomorrow on the recap email and, and repeatedly in the coming weeks. But if you're at your computer, which I guess for folks at their phone, um, everyone is, um, go ahead and open it. And we're just gonna walk, we're just gonna walk through it. And I'm gonna share my screen actually. And we're gonna go through the process of how you could actually request a meeting with an elected official. So I'm gonna share my screen here. And I'm just looking at this same page that you're looking at on your screen. I've got it printed out here if I'm looking down. But we're gonna, First, go to house.gov. I'm going to go through the process of requesting a meeting with my elected official in the House. It's Ayanna Presley. She's in Massachusetts. We're going to go to house.gov. And in the upper right hand corner, we're going to enter our zip code. So I'm going to put in 0143 for me. And if you're not sure who your member of Congress is at this point, you might enter your street address and it would then tell me, okay. It's Representative Presley, not Representative Clark. Um, I, I know that it's Representative Presley, so I'm going to go ahead 
and click on her name. That's going to take me directly to her website. And most congressional websites will be pretty similar in they'll have some biographical information, they'll have where they stand on the issues, they'll have a couple other things, and, and they should have a place front and center. Um, you might have to scroll down depending on the member of Congress with some way to contact them. And so here we see, okay, scheduling a request is an option that they give us. So we're gonna go ahead and see what they ask of us. Um, there'll be a series of questions, you know, and looking at a number of members of Congress's current pages, this seems to be a pretty standard form that a lot of them are using. I'm not sure if all of them use this exact same um, layout, but a lot of, uh, a number of them do. And in the possible questions, you'll see we listed out A through K on this document that you may be looking at um, answers, which should get you through this pretty quickly. So I'm just going to go through this. It's going to take a couple of minutes, but we're looking for a meeting request and they ask location. They don't say remote as an option, but we're going to say that's elsewhere in Washington, DC or elsewhere. And they ask for a number of attendees. And if you're a point person, you might not know um, at this point, um, a safe and totally fine placeholder for now is three. Um, you could say two, you could say one, wouldn't say more than three, um, but it is sort of arbitrary. And I would recommend keeping it simple, saying three. Uh, topic of engagement, I'm looking at the subject here, I'm just gonna say money in politics. And in the details, I'm probably going to copy and paste this message that is written out on this sheet that you have for everyone's time. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to type it all out, um, but this is where you would um, feel free to make it your own, but this message should really get the ball rolling in the right way. Um, and it's going to take you to, oh, date of engagement. It's only going to give me an option to give one day so if I know that the fourth or the fifth or the sixth is better for me, I'll specify. Um, if they all are best for me, I'm just going to go ahead and say the fourth. Um, let's try to request the earliest day of what we're shooting for. And again, it's going to ask you for some just basic demographic information. Powering through here. And it's going to say, what organization are you with? You're with American Promise title, I'm going to say volunteer. And your website, and again, you'll see this on that page, www.american.com. Ask me next for my address. They want to make sure you're a constituent. I'm going to say an address that I do know is in her district. Scott Street, Somerville. That's so 02143. I'm going to put in my email. All right, I'm going to put in a phone number. Feel free to give me a call and talk about American Promise if you want to. And then I would click send in your, your request. Now, I'm not going to do that right this second um, because there will be somebody from Massachusetts, um, somebody else from her district who is going to be attending the conference. And I think they're probably going to be the person and it won't be me. So I'm not going to do that, but that's it. That's, that's the whole process. These people, they work for us and this is our available tool to have meetings with our elected officials um, in a working democracy. It's civic upkeep that really guides us here. So I see a number of questions coming in and I, I do think we'll spend the most time of the remainder of this call going through and answering some of these. M Marnie, in looking at the questions here, are there one or two that immediately jump off to tackle first? Um. So one is from 
Cynthia, and she asks, would we want to coordinate with regional members of Common Cause, Indivisible, et cetera, who are working on the same issue? That's, I'll take that one first. And then Vicki and Maria, it would be great to hear about your experience and your chapters working with, you know, these groups or, or related groups and sort of that spirit of collaboration. But, you know, these organizations, Cynthia, that you mentioned and, and many others, um, you know, in the past, participate in our conference, you know, join in lobby day meetings in the past, you know, we schedule meetings with public citizen and people for the American way and common cause specifically, you know, they're, they're looped in and we're a big tent organization. And this is a chance for all of these reform groups. Most of them work on a number of different things. The amendment included American promise works on one thing. It's this constitutional amendment. And, you know, those groups absolutely are looped into what we're doing and, and supportive. Um, Vicki or Marie, have you guys had experience working with other reform-minded groups um, in your home states, not even associated necessarily with the conference. I, I can answer very briefly. Yes, we have. We've um, we've worked with Students Demand with our um, uh, joint um, meeting with our staff for our Congressperson. Um, we haven't done it statewide uh, in the in state with. Um, with the senators, um, and we had somebody—I um, forget now who it was, who, what organization it was with—who met in one of the lobby days in DC uh, in 2019 uh, with us. Yeah, we don't. I mean, our um, I have members of American Promise in Minnesota are also members of other groups, uh, so they participate with us, but we don't go with officially with another group uh, because we try and make sure we're cross-partisan. And sometimes legislators have different ideas of other groups, uh, but so for sure, I mean, Fairvo, uh, you know, there are a lot of groups we work with outside of, of lobby day, but I, I, I don't think I would take, I would do a joint common cause or indivisible and American promise lobby day um, on the amendment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the, there are, it seems like an infinite amount, it's not infinite, but there are you know, dozens and dozens of groups doing really good work, you know, either somewhat related or directly related in, in working the same amendment on forward. And, and we certainly um, will work together as, as much as possible. Um, I see some other questions here, which I want to get to. This one's from Greg Falk in Arizona. He says, some members of Congress have co-sponsored the amendment, some haven't. We have members, constituents in some of their districts, some of them we don't. How do we prioritize which members of Congress we reach out to? Um, Vicki, Marie, Marnie, any, does, do either of you wanna jump in here and, and start to answer this question? It's, it's a good one and I've got some thoughts, but it, it gives we, space we, here. We so. have, um... For Lobby Day, um, we have made um, appointments with members of Congress who certainly we had mem we have members from different parts of the state. So certainly with those members of Congress, but in addition, any other members of Congress where we felt if we had a constituent, even if they couldn't attend, we tried to do that. And um, in in um, one case, we didn't have a constituent, but we were still able to um, to get a meeting. Um, so, and it was somebody who had not yet, and it was, this was back in 2018, had not yet co-sponsored and became a co-sponsor after we met. So that, that felt pretty powerful. Um, yeah, I've met with members of Congress um, without having a constituent involved. And we you know, were, were able to make an appointment with them. Um, so you can do it. And as far as priority goes, um, I, I'd just say whatever you're comfortable with. I, I'd like to say I, I would I would pick a Republican uh, if, if that's your choice between parties, uh, because uh, you know the more they hear about it, uh, the 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 more they're you know going to realize it's a thing. <laughs> so uh, I I personally would would target Republicans, but whatever you're comfortable yeah. with. Yeah, that's the point that I would emphasize as well. You know, if if it's really a choice between someone who's already supporting this amendment and someone who needs convincing, I would, 
you know, take the harder medium. Um, that, that's going to move this forward um, more directly. Um, this, this is a good question. It's an anonymous listener. And they say, how much research on a representative beforehand is recommended? Um, there's no right answer to this, but Vicky or Marie, you know, can you think of, you've, you've had dozens of, of meetings with elected officials. What's your general level of, you know, research specific to a member of Congress before going into that meeting? Um, I find something to thank them for. I mean, usually, you, usually there's something there. And I tell you, when I met with um, uh, Eric Paulson, a Republican who's, who's no longer in office here, um, I met with him. And when I said, you know, I thank you so much for your work on uh, uh, human trafficking. And he just beamed. I mean, he was just, he said, that was the most important thing I've ever done in my life. I mean, he just beamed. Uh, so it, it was a really great way to start the meeting and I, and I was sincere in it. Uh, so usually, you know, sometimes you have to dig, but you usually can find something that, that you can thank them for. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, as part of the, part of the model, I know, I remember Sam Daly here, I'm pretty sure this is something that Sam said, but I, I know I heard it early on is that sometimes you can only thank them because they support the booster club at the at the local high school. <laughs> if you don't agree on anything else, you can find something. Um, but yeah, generally you can, especially Congress members, you'll be able to find something. I would also, you know, I'd suggest looking at whether they've um, supported previous um, money and politics kinds of um, other resolutions um, certainly is helpful or maybe if they have constituencies sort of going to what um, Azer covered in our um, tactics, um, ready to ratify, if they have constituents, constituents who would be concerned about um, the effect of money in politics on their industry or on, you know, on a special interest, whether it be the, the famous one that we've been talking about a lot lately is um, the Sportsman Alliance up in Maine um, and, and the, the money that's spent, you know, to try to do fuel extraction and pipelines and so on. That's not so great for the environment. Um, looking for something like that. I would even throw in too, um, look for something um, that, that looks like they wanna shake things up, you know, like, like term limits or, you know, things like that. They wanna, they wanna just kind of, even, even the Balance Bud Budget Act, you know, something like it's, it's something that shows that they wanna make some kind of drastic change to the way things are, are run, um, you know they're 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 uh, they're willing to go outside of the comfort zone of the rest of us, and that may be that may be something that indicates they'd support or at least be interested in hearing about the amendment. Yeah, I would yeah. also add to um, like don't be scared to share how like your congressperson's work has been has impacted you. Um, like I remember working with Sam Daly Harris and he always explains like share your story of self. It doesn't necessarily have to be long and drawn out, but just identifying kind of what Vicki and Marie said, like how their work has impacted you. It could either, it could be positive and I, in terms of, um, and then making those connections I think is also effective. Yeah. And then one other thing back to research and it's part of what we put into the model for the meeting, I know Laura kind of referenced it, uh, Laura Nipmeyer referenced it in the comments, is that, um, you know, going back to some of the meetings with Republicans that haven't been supported the bill, but if, if you ask them about whether money in politics, if they feel that money in politics is affecting their ability to represent their constituents or how how the whole process of Congress and government is affected, they usually have some pr pretty, um, passionate things to say. They may feel like they can't support, sometimes they can't support because of maybe a party position, but um, they usually do feel, have a pretty strong feeling about money and politics. So that's something that's happened. Yeah. And, and if, if, all, if all else is lost, um, when you go in their office, not virtually, but you'll see things behind them, um, you know, look at their walls. <laughs> They'll, they'll, you know, they'll have trophies and pictures and, you know, Colin Peterson's office was the most fascinating thing you've ever seen. Uh, so that, you know, you will find something in there to, to say something nice about. <laughs> I, 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 I'm reminded of a great point by Alan LaPolice, a congressional candidate himself. And he 
recommends find out how much money their opponent raised um, when running against them in the last election. Sometimes that can be really um, sort of that eye opener. You know, I, I think of Lindsey Graham um, just this last election cycle and his challenger raised a record $53 million or something in the third quarter. And, you know, he's at a hearing in Congress and he said, this is crazy. We need to revisit that Citizens United decision. And, you know, is a cynical reason. He just didn't like that he was being outraised by his challenger, but it's a great point. You know, opensecrets.org is, is really that place to find that information. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be, you know, that eye opener for a member of Congress who thinks that the system might be currently benefiting them uh, to realize, you know, it's actually screwing me over and, and, you know, these people don't like it either who are nicely in my office prepared asking me to change it. Um, I want to get to a question from Joan DeVore. It's a really good one. Um, she said it's a bit of a, a touchy one and, you know, it's, an, it's definitely an interesting one. You know, there's some legislators who might be more challenging um, than others to um, get on board and Joan's example is um, Senator Hawley in Missouri or, or Representative Marjorie Green. You know, whoever you are, you might have different people who you think, well, these are the people that I really wouldn't want to meet with. But, you know, the question is, how do we deal with elected officials who um, we don't think um, will want to support this or we don't particularly feel like we want to engage in a constructive way? And, you know, maybe just going into those two examples, Senator Howley or, or Representative Green, both are, you know, sort of riding populist waves. Representative Marjorie Green, a QAnon candidate, you know, it's really sort of outrageous to think QAnon has some political influence, but, you know, here are people really disaffected by our politics. They're sitting at their computer and they're looking for some meaning or something to grasp onto, something to rally around. And part of that disaffection might be they don't feel like they have a voice uh, under our, how our Congress is currently functioning. And you know, this is how they're directing their energy. And you know, they probably don't know so much about um, this constitutional amendment. But I, I'm going into this rabbit hole sort of as a thought experiment in there's an elected official who we might not agree with at all on anything, but we can try to find some start of common ground on why we might be able to work together to move something like this constitutional amendment, which you think, you know, is, is money, free speech and our constitutional rights meant for people. Should we really give them to groups of people like corporations and unions and nonprofits? Um, it's common sense for most people and we can really, and we do emphasize the importance of having an open mind and not writing somebody off just because we might not agree with how they um, deal with any number of issues, but maybe we don't know where they stand on this particular one. So I, I think that's an important one to emphasize. American Promise is cross-partisan, not to say check your political affiliations at the door, but to say we know that to win something as big as a constitutional amendment, we've got to work with people who we don't agree with on everything. Um, and this is that, that commitment. Um, there are plenty of partisan organizations doing great work and or cross partisan organization doing, doing really hard work, but, but did work. Um, and anything to add on those points, um, Marie or Vicky or Marnie quickly before we close out the call? No, I just think that there was just a question about um, from Mark, I can't read his last name, Fresalun, about Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor Greene or Holly, do we avoid people that we know will be strongly against, against so we don't clue them into the fact that this is a thing or uh, do we not educate them? And, and I would say, and I think we've had the discussion before that um, it depends, certainly it's worth educating them. It's worth saying, hey, this is a problem that we see. And what do you think about it? You sometimes might be surprised. Um, when I first got into this um, work, um, my local congressperson um, has a brother who's really a machine politician, a machine behind the politics. And I thought, oh, there's no way he's gonna support this. Well, guess what? He co-sponsored, he's co-sponsored um, the two main resolutions 
well, in the first Congress he did that he was in less when it just did the H.J. HJ Res 2. So I thought, well, he, he really benefits from his brother's money in politics. He, there's no way he's going to support it, but he does. So you never know um, until you talk to them. And if you think it's going to be somebody who's really difficult to talk to and there's somebody else who's an easier person that you can get to talk to for the first time, then certainly spend the time with the person you think you're going to be able to maybe move the needle on a little bit more. But anybody mm -hmm. is worth talking to because we do have to have a majority, a two thirds vote across all of Congress. Mm -hmm. and, and quickly before we turn it to Marnie to close out the call, Sean Callahan in Massachusetts asks a good question. He says, how many other citizen lobbyists, you know, advocates are there out there? And how many other issues are in front of an elected officials, you know, in their day to day happenings? And, you know, we, we had a presentation from the Congressional Ma Management Foundation a while ago. And I remember they showed a graph and it was or a, a visual and it was your brain. It was a picture of a brain. And it said, you know, you think your issue is here. And it's your whole brain. And then it shows the member of Congress's brain. And our issue is minuscule. To, they've got a hundred things that they do every hour, every, every day, however you want to look at it. And it's our job to make for the time that we're interacting with them, that issue to go from something that we can't see to something that's top of mind for them. And then we're going to have to do it again and, and slowly build that relationship and build them up the champion scale. So it's, it's good to remind ourselves that we're not the only people, you know, that have something that they want to see changed in this country. You know, that's, that's how a democracy functions. There are lots of ideas. Some are bad, some are good. And it's our job to, you know, keep moving our idea forward by being prepared, professional, and organized amongst ourselves. And that's what this Citizen Lobby Day is really built to, to demonstrate powerfully, um, all at the same time with many meetings happening in a short period of time. And um, I, I know there are questions that we're not going to be able to get to, but there will be more Lobby Day prep calls ahead of the conference. And you can always reach out to myself or Marnie. And if you're not engaged in a chapter in where you live, please do so. And, and there are all sorts of interactions with people in New Jersey and Minnesota and Virginia and Ohio and, and across the country um, horizontally every, every day. But with, with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to Marnie to wrap us up here. Back to you, Marnie. Thank you, Azer. So as we wrap up here, I'll just remind you that you can learn more and register for the conference and lobby day, which will, the link will be inserted in the chat. We will continue. Put it in right now. Thank you. <laughs> we will continue to prepare on our second training call, which will be Wednesday, March 24th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. We'll, we'll, while we'll go over planning for the meeting itself and our third lobby day prep training will be Wednesday, April 14th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. So mark your calendars for March 24th and April 14th at 7.30 p.m. Between now and then, register for the NCLC and lobby day. We'll work with you to clarify who's going to schedule each meeting with their U.S. representative and with your U.S. senators. If there are nearby congressional districts and you have friends who live in those districts and would be willing to practice and prepare for those meetings in those districts, then reach out and assist them in scheduling those meetings too. And feel free to reach out to me with any questions at marniew at americanpromise.net. And that's at marniew at americanpromise.net. Thank you, everyone, and have a great night. Great. Thanks, all.